If you would, open your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 8, Revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 8. This chapter is only 13 verses, and we're going to attempt to do all, to speak on all 13 verses uh, this morning. So once you find your place in Revelation chapter 8, I invite you to stand in honor of reading God's word. I will apologize in advance. Uh, my glasses broke Thursday night, and so um, I'm wearing my old ones. And so if I repeat a sentence, I'm sorry, I apologize. All right, and so uh, let's look at verse 1. Uh, chapter 8, verse 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that, the, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. And the second angel sounded, and it were a great mountain burning with fire, and uh, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Fountain of waters. And the name of the star was is called Wormwood, and the third part of the Waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was darkened, or was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise." And I beheld and heard an angel saying, or flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I pray this morning, ask you that we would all stay focused this morning, Lord, and we would uh, understand what you have for us this morning. Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit would be able to do his job, or that he would soften the hearts, and he would... That so that the word would penetrate and prick the hearts of all those that are here and listening, uh, watching live stream and listening at a later date. Father, and I ask that you would do all these things in the name of thy precious Son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. So we are to the seventh seal. As you remember in chapter 5, we... It talked how that there was a, a scroll 
uh, or a book with, that was sealed with seven seals. We've discussed the first six, and there was a pause in chapter seven of things that were, uh, there was a pause between the, ch- the sixth seal and the seventh seal. Now we are to the seventh seal. This is the latter half of the tribulation, the latter uh, three and a half years of the tribulation, and this is the seventh seal. Now, we're not discussing everything that happened in the seventh seal this morning, but we're, we're beginning, and so the title of the message this morning is the seventh seal, and uh, a lot of things are going to happen uh, with this first four seals, the first, or not four seals, but the first four angels and the first four trumpets uh, as they sound, a lot of things are going to happen, and uh, we, we need to see what's going to happen and understand God is still a God of order. Even in the tribulation, he's a God of order. Uh, and, and there's some of the things that we're going to discuss this morning that he to himself, that God used in the Old Testament uh, that it shows here, here on, in the book of Revelation. And so if God used this in the Old Testament, he's using this in the book of Revelation, we need to understand, yes, there's an Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, New Covenant, but this is one volume. This is a completed word, okay? And so uh, let's look at uh, this seventh seal. Uh, the first thing I want you to see is there was a silence in heaven. There's silence in heaven, verses 1 through 5. Now, what, from what we've read in the book of Revelation... Uh, and what we've re- what we've read in the Old Testament and things about heaven, uh, there's usually not silence in heaven. Why is there not silence in heaven? Well, the th- in heaven, well, think about this: there's every time someone gets saved, angels rejoice. Not only that, but we've read in the former chapters of the Book of Revelation that there's singing and there's praising, there's worshiping, uh, uh, elders throwing down their crowns, right and uh, there's all kinds of noise that's going on in heaven of celebration, of praising and worshiping. But it says here in verse 1 uh, that, uh, and when he had opened the seventh seal, said there was silence. Can you imagine silence in heaven? No worshiping, no praising, nothing. Now, we've read that there was silence on the earth and things of that nature, and we kind of know what silence is uh, a little bit. Uh, when uh, in church or at home, you know, we always tell the kids, silence, right? And uh, uh, be quiet. We don't want to hear anything. Don't want to be disturbed. But listen, heaven, all of heaven was silent. This was an unexpected silence. But, because you wouldn't think that this would, would happen. But uh, if you look here, as in verse 1, he says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven. And I, I, I believe this silence was a moment of expectations. Because heaven knew the elders, the angels, the cherubims, uh, I mean, all of the, that said, Holy, 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 that continued to fly around in the midst of the throne of God. Uh, listen, all of them, not a word, nothing was said. Silence ha- uh, was there, and I believe it was a silence of anticipation. Also, it could be a silence of awe and reverence because what was about to happen, because what, was about to, what is about to happen on earth has never happened before. We know that God has show, started judgment with the, with the first six seals and the first three and a half years of the tribulation, but they haven't seen anything yet. And I believe that all the angels and the elders were in silence and anticipation of judgment coming to the earth. And so uh, uh, let's look at this, at this silence and then uh, these, uh, and what happens. Uh, after the silence, it says there's silence. And now remember, John was still on earth. His body was on earth, but he was, had this vision. And so he, he reckons the time was about an, half an hour. Uh, for most of you, it would t- be an act of Congress for you to be quiet for half an hour. You know, and so, but John says about a half an hour, there was nothing going on but silence in heaven. Verse 2, and I saw, this is what John says, I saw the seven 
angels which stood before God. It wasn't just se any seven angels. It, it, there was a title, the seven angels. So there are seven angels that stand before God. Some thought maybe it was Gabriel because when Gabriel comes down to give the message uh, to Mary, he says that he claims that he's an angel that stands in the presence of God. Well, if you think about it, every single angel in heaven is in God's presence, right? So is Gabriel part of that? I don't know. It doesn't mention him here, but it says these seven angels, they were standing before God. Why? They were prepared. They were waiting in anticipation to do what God had created them to do. And what God created them to do was to carry out this seventh seal. And, and they stand before God. And these seven angels were different than any of the other angels because they had specific tasks and had, they also had the seven trumpets. And so, uh, and them were given seven trumpets in verse 2. Now let's look at, uh, in verse 3, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. So uh, the, there was another angel that came with a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And so the angel... He replicated what was going on. He was replicating here in heaven what, was, what happened in the Old Testament in Exodus. Uh, in Exodus, uh, let's turn to chap Exodus chapter 30 and read uh, what happened there in Exodus. That the angel, that everything was going on in heaven was the same thing that happened in Exodus. Exodus chapter 30 where it talks about this altar, the altar of incense. Chapter 30, in verse number 1. Exodus 30, chapter, chapter 30, verse number 1. And here it is it's talking about the tabernacle and the altar of incense. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof, and horns thereof shall be the same, be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and top thereof, and the, and the sides thereof, round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make uh, to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof upon the two sides of it shall thou make it and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it uh, withal and thou shalt look at this and shall thou make staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and thou shalt put it before the veil so it's before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn therein sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps. And he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even the second time, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereof nor burnt sacrifice, nor uh, meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereof. And Aaron shall make an atonement uh, upon the horns of it once in a, uh, in a year with the blood of the sin offering of the, ato uh, the atonements. Once, uh, once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. And so... What, the, what God gave instruction for Moses to do in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 30, the angel is replicating in, in the book of Revelation. The priest would take coals from the brazen altar. If you look further down in chapter 30, you'll see where it talks about the brazen altar. And uh, put it on the altar of incense, and the smoke that would come up from the burning of the incense would go 
uh, to the veil, and it, uh, it would go to the veil and to the mercy seat, which represented prayers of Israel. The smoke would represent prayers of Israel, and Aaron would do this twice a day. And so, and, and listen, it, when the angel is doing this, it says he had a censer of incense with the prayers of who? The saints, talking about that he had it, and when... He took the fire and the incense, and it came up, the smoke, the sweet savor came up to God, talking about the prayers of the saints. Listen, you, beloved, we need to understand that God, uh, when we pray, God receives those prayers, but those prayers are received through the mediator, Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those, the prayers that we have that he offers up there with those, that incense, Listen, the only way we get to God, that God answers those prayers, is through Jesus Christ. And so we see uh, that it also had to go through the veil, which was rent when Jesus was crucified, right? The veil rent, and so that the smoke would pass through the veil into the mercy seat. Well, when the angel did this, that the sweet swelling savor rose up to God uh, about our prayers. Listen, God answers our prayers. Because it doesn't matter when we pray. It, what matters is that we should pray and we ought to pray. And God hears those prayers. And so this angel, when he does this, uh, those prayers go up uh, as incense to God. A, sm a sweet smelling savor. And so, uh, but listen, this angel also took that golden censer and took fire from off the altar and threw it to heaven. Or threw it to earth, not heaven. Threw it to earth, right? Uh, verse 5, and the angel took the, the censer and filled it with fire so, from the altar. So he, after he did that with the incense, he took that same censer, filled it with fire, and what did he do? He threw it to earth. He threw it to earth, and there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And when he threw that fire, the seven angels, verse 6, they prepared themselves to sound. So the seventh seal, as it's up being opened, as Jesus opens it, all this is going on. Let's look at the sounding of the four trumpets. After the angel throws this fire. Now listen, in verse 5 it talks about there's an earthquake. I believe this earthquake uh, that is happening uh, kind of ushers in everything else that's going to happen. This great earthquake uh, that's going to happen. Verse 7 talks about the sounding of the four trumpets. The, uh, the, the first angel sounded, verse 7. The first angel sounded and there followed Hell and fire mingled with blood, and there was cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all grass was burnt up. So hell and fire mi mixed with blood was cast upon the earth. And I'm looking at this, and I'm interpreting it as this way, that this very well may be the earthquake in verse 5 that caused a worldwide volcanic eruptions that would interact with the atmosphere. It would cause massive thunderstorms that produced hell. I don't know if any of you have ever been in, in a city or somewhere that's near a volcanic eruption, but it's chaos. Right, it's chaos when a major volcano eruption. So uh, this earthquake may have caused these volcanoes to erupt and all kinds of things are happening from the atmosphere. And because when this volcan these volcanoes erupt, a third of the trees and a third of the grass was burned up, well, what does, what does lava do? Burns everything, doesn't it? So think about this. All of a sudden, all at once, Earth sees all these volcanoes that burns up a third of the trees and a third of the grass. That's a lot of volcanoes. Listen, that's a lot of area. Right, and so uh, this is the uh, the from the first uh, trumpet from the first angel, and so listen. I know that we as humans ought to do the best we can 
with conserving our world to a certain extent, right? We need to try to, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not, listen, I am not a green, uh, green guy. I'm not someone that uh, thinks that humans, that we're going to destroy the earth because, listen, in these first uh, four trumpets, God does more to destroy this earth than we ever will do. God is going to destroy more of this earth than we ever will accomplish. I think we ought to be responsible the way we handle things, I, 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 you know, to a certain extent. But listen, what our nation has begun and this world has begun to try to worship, God is going to destroy. Hello? Listen, humans have... Uh, decided to worship the creation rather than the creator. I mean, when we have world leaders talking about climate change and what laws that they need to pass so that there's about climate change. I'm not trying to be political, but listen, we have, uh, I mean, worshiping the earth has become a big deal in our own country. And so God's going to destroy a lot, of the, a lot of this earth more than we ever will. So I just want you to understand that. Number two, let's look at the, 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 uh, uh, the second angel as he sounded, as the second angel sounded, verses 8 and 9. It says, And the second angel sounded and was, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood, and a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. So uh, could it be that maybe one of the mountains, top of the volcanoes, uh, blew up and it was on fire and it came into the sea? And, or it could have been a meteorite? We have no idea, but we do know that there's going to be something massive that looks like a mountain that's going to get tossed into the sea and... What does it say? A third part of the creatures in the, uh, in the, into the sea, and a third part of uh, the sea became... Listen, a third part of the whole sea. If we're talking all the, uh, all the oceans, one-third of it turns to blood. A third of the, uh, the creatures, all the fish that we like to catch and that we like to look at and see. All, listen, a third of uh, all the living creatures in the sea are, gonna be de- or are going to die. Because of this massive mountain, uh, piece, uh, mountain is going to be thrown into the sea. And then we have the third angel sounded, verses 10 and 11. And the third angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star was called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So the the third angel sounded and a star or it could be a a meteorite of some sort or even a falling star fell uh, from heaven like a torch. And it it says it burns one third of the fresh water. Think about that. One third of the earth of the world's fresh water is poisoned because of this burning star. God's, he's taken out a third of the seas. Now he's taken out a third of the fresh water. And it says that many men died because it turned the fresh water into poison. Listen, listen, our earth, this world has never seen what God is doing now with the seventh seal. Never seen before. And all this is going to happen. And the fourth angel sounded in verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun, look at this, third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the light uh, and the night likewise. So now, when the fourth angel sounded, a third of the sun, moon, and stars were darkened. 
God begins to turn off the lights of this world. In chapter 6, 16, in verse 8, it says that God turns up the sun. So listen, God can do with the sun what he pleases. Hello? He created the sun. He can do with it what he pleases. In chapter 16, in verse 8, it says that he turns the sun up so that men were burned. So if God, God here, he's going to darken a third of the sun, but in chapter 16, he's going to crank it up. This was this particular, uh, talking about the day of the Lord, talking about the judgment of the Lord, it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 13, and verse 8, it says, and, it says, and they shall be afraid, uh, uh, pangs and sorrows, shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the Lord, uh, behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and uh, the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So in Isaiah, this was prophesied also in Amos chapter 8. It talks about this. We discussed this when we were going through the book of Amos. Listen, all this was prophesied, and believe you me, the world knows that God is the one that's doing this. Because if you remember in chapter 6, they say, uh, they ask the mountains, the rocks to fall, and listen, to, 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 to hide them from the judgment of God and from the Lamb. They, the world knows that this judgment is come from God, but if you also look in chapter 16 and verse 8, when it says that the sun burned them up, they would not repent and give God glory. They suffer through all these judgments, and in chapter 16, verse 8, it says that they would not rep repent and give God glory. And the, it's going to get worse for them. And the angel flies through the heavens. He gives the world a sober warning. Verse 13, he says, And behold, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the middle, midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason. The reason for the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So this, it, John says he sees this angel flying through the heavens, and he's the angel saying, whoa, 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 three woes. Why? Because there's three other trumpets that's got to sound. There's a sobering warning for this earth. What we say here in the south, you ain't seen nothing yet. This world ain't seen nothing yet, what's yet to come. Listen, God is holy. He's powerful. And he is full of justice and who is to be feared. Yet, they will not repent and give God glory. Folks, he's going to judge this earth. Out of the same censor that this angel offers up, prayers that go from the saints, judgment is thrown to this earth. The same God who offers and gives mercy through Christ is the same God who judges this earth, who will judge this world. My question for you here, you watching live on Facebook, or those of you that are listening to this as a podcast, where will you be? Because we know the rapture is intimate. It can happen at any moment. And the more we see our world getting worse and worse, the more I'm looking forward or looking for it to happen sooner and sooner. I see Gog and Magog and lining up, Russia and China. 
with everything that's going on in this world, I see things are ramping up pretty quick. I'm not one to put a date on it, but if I were to, to I would say it's going to happen at any moment. It's imminent. And if you are not saved, you will go through this. Could be that you die in one of the first six seals. It could be that you die in the seventh seal. Who knows? But the only way you get mercy from, the, from God judging this world is through Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross. Listen, will you be in heaven in silence watching what happens, or will you be here going through it? I praise the Lord that he saved me, that I won't have to go through this judgment. My judgment was settled at the cross. Where's yours? Will you have to stand before the great white throne? Because you neglect and, and willingly reject the finished work of Christ, what he did on the cross, or was your judgment at the, at the, on the cross? Have you repented? Have you given God glory? Because if you haven't, and the rapture happens, you won't. And you will have to suffer judgment with the rest that reject Christ. And you will know when this happens, you will know it is from God. And you won't be able to stand. Where will you be? Listen, in a moment we're going to have a time of invitation. We're going to have some music playing. I'm going to pray and we're going to have some music praying, uh, playing and Listen, if you're not sure if you were to die today, heaven would be your home, and you're not sure that that if the rapture were to, were to happen, that you would be you would go up to heaven with uh, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God when it sounds, and you you're not sure that you would be raptured out of here. Listen, hey, listen, we want to take the time to show you from God's word how you can be raptured up, how you can know for sure that heaven would is your home when you leave this earth, when your heart quits beating. If you're not sure, when the invitation happens, come forward. Let me know. You say, well, what, I've, been, I've said I've been saved for years. Well, what will people think? Well, who cares what they think? The only thing that matters is what God knows. It's more shame than pretending to be saved than coming forward. People thinking that you were. far worse for you to pretend to be a Christian, pretend to be saved than not be and have to suffer judgment. Might be somebody watching live stream on Facebook this morning, not sure if they were to die today, heaven would be their home. Listen, if you're not sure and you're watching live stream, listen, message us, send us a message, let us know that you're not sure heaven would be your home. I would gladly like to respond to you, even get your phone number so I could talk to you or your address so I could come and visit with you, show you from God's word how that you can know that if you were to die today, heaven would be your home. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, send me an email. Email the church. I'd love to get a hold of you and show you from God's word. Where will you be? Where will you be? Father, as we conclude this morning, Lord, this is massive what's going to happen to this earth. Lord, some great things are going to happen, some or your judgment will be poured out upon this world and the people of this world. Lord, I pray this morning that if there's someone here that, Lord, if they are not sure, or maybe they have a hope so or a maybe so, or they're, but they're not 100% sure that if they were to die today, that they'd be in heaven, Lord. I pray this morning that they'd come forward or if they're watching or listening, that they would send us a message.
so we could show them how that they can know. Lord, there's a possibility that someone in here watching or listening, or they know they're not saved and they know they need to be. Or I pray that you'd give them that confidence, Lord, that they need to either come forward this morning or to message us and let us know. Or it's going to be, it would be a sad day, a very sad day if they have to go through this. And then eventually have to stand before the great white throne because they continue to reject Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Father, I pray this morning that you have spoken to your people through the preaching of your word. Father, may now your people respond. And you would have your will and your way in the invitation. Father, I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen.